For years and years, adding custom fields in Shopify was a tricky process. You had to use hidden URLs or worse, install unreliable browser extensions in order to add and edit them. Then for displaying that field in your theme, the only option was to hard code that field directly into your theme code. That is until Shopify announced the new meta field system at Unite 2021, and my God has the system improved. This new update allows you to edit meta fields directly from the admin alongside the standard fields within a resources edit page, and combined with the new data linking feature inside the store editor, you can link the newly created meta fields to section settings, removing the need to write any code at all to bring meta fields onto your front end. In this video, let's take a look at how we manage meta fields in Shopify under the new online store 2.0 system. As always, I'm going to start off this video inside my development store, Chris Testing Shop. As we spoke about in the last video, despite the wording from Shopify regarding all online stores created after June 29, 2021 being online store 2.0 stores, it seems like all the features talked about in online store 2.0 are applying to all stores, no matter whether they were created before or after June 29, 2021. If I scroll down, you can see I can connect with GitHub. I can go into settings and add meta fields like we're going to do in today's video. And I can run the Dawn theme as you'll see in this tutorial. So it seems that at the time of this recording, it doesn't matter whether your store was created before June 29 or after, you're going to have access to all these features. So of course, in this video, we're going to be talking about Shopify meta fields, one of the most exciting features to come out with these suite of changes that Shopify are calling online store 2.0. And it's pretty simple to get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head into my customizer or theme editor, as they now call it and I'm going to head to the default product template. Here you can see I've got one of my example products loaded up and here you can see the main product information section with all of these blocks. All right, so one of the cool things that is new in this online store 2.0 experience is data linking. So if I click on this one here, you'll see that we've got the vendor field linked up in this text field right here. So here you can see the vendor on this particular product is Shopify, and that's a dynamic field that comes through the specific product onto the front end via here. So if we wanted to hard code this and make this something else like product title below, now you can see it changes to product title below, but it's not dynamic. So now every product that uses this template is going to have that text. So this is something that's super cool within online store 2.0. We can add a dynamic source and we could add, for instance, the vendor here. If I go to the next one down, you can see this one is just title. It doesn't have any settings, but you can go down here and you can see that we can add a product subtitle as well. Here you can see we can add a product subtitle meta field to display. But what I'm gonna do is create my own meta field and we can get started right inside this theme editor. So I'm gonna click on this first one here and vendor kind of means brand in Shopify, but let's just say I want to use the word brand instead. I'm gonna get rid of this and link a new data source and use this option at the bottom here to add a new meta field. I'll click that and it'll open up the meta fields settings page inside your store settings. Okay, so I can go to settings here and then click on meta fields to get to the same place or I can navigate there via this shortcut in the editor. So going back to it, let's go to products. As you can see from this list here, collections, customers and orders are coming soon. So that's not quite out yet at the time of recording but products are your main resource in Shopify. So let's click on that one and let's add a definition. I'm just gonna call this one brand, very simple. And as you can see here, it already defines a namespace and key for us. We can change this or we can leave it the same. It doesn't really matter. In this case, we can just leave it as is. We can put in the description if we want, describes or let's say holds the brand of the product. 
pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, if you want to put in the description, that's where you do it. And then here we can click this button to select the content type. Now you can see there are some new ones like date and time, color, file, JSON. That's really cool. We're going to look at file in a minute, but for now we just need single line of text. Um, so we don't need to change to multi-line here, just single line. And we can add some additional rules as well. So let's say I don't really want to have brands that are shorter than two characters. I don't think there's going to be any brands that are one character. And let's say the maximum length is 20. We can also add in a regular expression here, but that shouldn't be required for this particular meta field. And I'm going to hit save on that. As you can see, we've got our new product meta field definition. Now, in order to edit this meta field based on what product you're looking at, we can do so directly in the, the product section of the admin. This, of course, is where it makes the most sense to do it. But until this point, we weren't able to actually do this. So if I go back to the customizer here or the theme editor, as it's now called, we were looking at the Cool Kicks product. So I'm going to go to that product first. I'm going to go to Cool Kicks. Let's open that one up. And of course, we've got all the fields that we can usually edit. But if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see we've now got the meta fields that we've defined in our meta field settings. So here under brand, what I'm going to do is type Nike, because as we can see, maybe not too clearly, but these are, I believe, Nike shoes. So let's just say Nike there and let's save. Now the value of Nike is saved on that meta field of the product. And if I go back to here and refresh, you can see that our new meta field has been listed over here as a dynamic source. So I'm going to click on that, click insert, and you can see we've actually got um, both of them in at the moment. We can link two things. So I'm just going to remove that one for vendor. And now you can see we've just got the one dynamic source linked in of brand. So up here you can see above cool kicks, Nike. So what I'll do is I'll go back, I'll hit save on that. And now if we go to another product, so we can click over here to change the specific product that we're looking at. Let's go to awesome sneakers, click select on that. You can see that nothing comes through for brand because we haven't set that value on that particular product. But if I go to awesome sneakers in my admin, this one is clearly Nike as well, but let's just say it's not Nike and let's just say it's Adidas or Adidas, depending on how you pronounce it. Actually, I think that's the wrong spelling of Adidas. There we go. Hit save on that. Now let's go back to this page in the admin, refresh, and you'll see it says Adidas or Adidas, okay? So now we've got a dynamic value based on the product that we're looking at. Just like product.title changes to the product we're looking at, this text will change depending on what product we're looking at. So as you can see, very simple stuff. It makes a lot of sense. And the only thing that doesn't really make sense at this point is why it took Shopify so long to implement this. As you can see, we've had to write zero code in order for this to work. So it's a big step up from how we used to do meta fields in Shopify. I'm going to go back to here and just for completeness sake, I'm going to write Nike as the brand because you've clearly got the Nike branding on that shoe just to satisfy my OCD here. There we go. Nike is the brand on this product. Now, if you're like me and you wish to have a deep understanding of where this is all linking up, you might be curious as to know where this data is being stored in your theme. And the answer is directly inside the product template. So this is something that we never saw before in Shopify because product templates were written in liquid. So there was no data stored in the product template. This is different now because we have JSON templates. So if I go into the theme here and click edit code to view the code inside the admin and I go to the product.json template, you can see here that inside text, I have the reference to the meta field here. You can see this is also the case for the subtitle. I've got this subtitle meta field right here, and that's being linked 
directly inside this subtitle settings object. Okay, so if I was to change this, let's just say I change this to brand and hit save. I actually have to change the namespace as well. One second. So instead of descriptors, my fields dot brand and hit save on that. Now, if I look at the theme again, let's open it up and let's go to awesome sneakers. You can see that the brand appears above and below. So remember we had a subtitle here, which was actually empty, but now we've put the brand down here as well. So we're getting the exact same result as if we updated it in the admin. So for those of you who are a bit more advanced and wanna know where data is stored, this is where it gets stored. And of course, that means when you transfer a theme to another store, this data is retained as it's stored in the actual theme. Again, just to drill at home, I wanna draw attention to where we edit these meta fields. So we just go to settings and go to meta fields here. This is where we update our definitions. And to just provide one more example, I'm going to add in an image field. This is something really cool because in previous times, you used to have to upload the image to files. So you'd go into here and go into here, upload an image in terms of a file, and then have to put the address of that file inside a meta field. Now with these new meta field types, so if I click on products and add a definition, you can see that I can insert a file as one of the meta field types. And what that allows me to do is upload the file directly in the admin so that the file is both uploaded to the Shopify CDN and the reference is stored in the meta field without me having to do those two things as separate steps. Perhaps that doesn't make a lot of sense me saying it, so I'm just gonna do it for you so you can see it as an example. If I type in, let's just say, for whatever reason we have an additional image, let's call it additional image. So now we can store an additional image on any product. So I'll click select content type. It's gonna be a file because an image is a file. And right here you can see that we can restrict it to only accept images or we can accept all file types. I'm gonna keep the only accepts images ticked. Hit save on that. And now if we go to our products, go over to let's say awesome sneakers and scroll down to where our meta fields are, you can see we've got a field here for additional image. And if I click in there, I have the option to select an image. And as you can see here, we can upload an image or we can add images that already exist in our Shopify store already. I'm on a guest account in my computer, so I don't actually have an image to upload from this user. So I'm just gonna select an image that already exists in the store. If you notice briefly there, it has the reference to the image there before it came up with the file name. We'll see that in just a second once we look at the documentation, but I'll hit save on that. And then the next step will be building it into our theme that we can display that image. So what I'm gonna do is head to the online store, do a little bit of a theme modification on this Dawn theme. So I'm gonna go into actions, click edit code, and I'm gonna head down to that section that we were working with before, which is main-product.liquid. And if you look at the code and study it, you'll notice that, let me just go to where price is, here we go. We've got these blocks with no settings in them, okay? So we've obviously got our blocks array up here. And if we look in the actual code, first of all, in the schema, you can see we've got these three fields here with no settings. Now that might be like, okay, why are they doing that at this stage? But then if we look inside the liquid, so let's look at title and I'll try and find where that's showing up. You can see inside our section blocks loop, we've got some code that looks for the type of block and then just inputs some dynamic code. So for instance, when the block type is title, we're just going to output the product title. So the setting is already built into the liquid code here. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is following this format, I'm going to put in a when, and it's gonna be when image, we're gonna display, for now let's put in the explicit image meta field. So if I open up my settings in a new tab, go over here to meta fields and just copy the whole definition right here. Go back into here and pop that in there. Then pull the image URL off that. Let's just say it's gonna be 400X. And then let's do the alt as well. So alt is gonna be, don't forget our curly brackets here, additional image dot alt. And then of course we need to build that into the schema. So I'm going to look for price in the schema. And again, just copy this sort of format. Inside the name, I'm gonna call it image. And in the type, I'm gonna call it image, which matches what we've written in our code. Okay, so if I hit save on that, and now let's go to the theme editor. I'm gonna to go to the product template. And now I can add an image block. So I click on image and you'll see if I scroll down, this one has no image. So we actually have to write some code to verify that an image exists. So I'll just do that quickly. And then go when image, we're gonna say if, then we're gonna output going to say equals does not equal blank then we'll output it so I'll hit save on that let's refresh over here we'll just have to add back in that block here we go image and you'll see nothing shows up for this particular product but if I go to the product where we just set the image uh, which was awesome sneakers. So let's change this to awesome sneakers. Select that and scroll down. You'll see that the image we just added to that product in the admin shows up here. And of course it's a block so we can move it. I'll grab this little handle here and move it to the top. And as you can see, terrible design, but we can move this image wherever we want. If we wanna make this even more dynamic, what we can do is make this a normal field in the block settings and then dynamically link the meta field. And that gives us the option to change it to another explicit value in the theme editor later if we so choose. So I'm just gonna do that now. Let's go over here and instead of this, what we're gonna do is replace product.metafields.myfields.additionalimage with block dot settings dot image okay so I'm going to replace all these references to additional image with the block setting instead there we go then of course we need to update our schema to include that setting so let's too many of the keyword image but if I just keep searching we'll get down to here in the admin so let's create a settings array here as we usually would inside this settings array I'm going to put in a settings object indenting is kind of hard <laughs> in this system but we're going to have a ID of image and a label of image and I think that's all we need yeah let's just try that see if that works I think we've missed the type there. That was the one thing I missed out. Type, image picker, hit save on that. Now it seems to have worked. So if I go back to my product page over here in the theme editor and refresh, if I scroll down, we're not gonna have that image anymore because it's now related to a theme editor setting. But if I click here, you can see I can select an image so I can select this and it'll apply to every product that uses this product template or 
I can do a dynamic link. So I'll remove that one and let's link the meta field that we created earlier. So I'll click here for additional image and connect. And so the benefit of doing it this way is I can pull from the meta field if I want, or I can pull from another meta field later by clicking this and changing dynamic source, or I can remove the dynamic source altogether and get every product template of the default product template that is to use the same image. So it gives me maximum flexibility if I do it this way, as opposed to hard coding the meta field into my theme code as we did earlier. So if I go up here, you'll see before we hard coded in the meta field, but this time we added a setting and we put the setting here and we still get the benefit of being able to insert a meta field, but we're doing it from the editor. And of course, where is it stored? We refresh over here and look at our product.json template. Scroll down to image. You can see it's not there yet. My mistake, I didn't actually hit save on this, but if we hit save on that and then refresh our product.json, you'll see the reference to the meta field is now stored. So that's it guys, that's how you can add meta fields in the new version of Shopify. How good is this compared to the previous way of doing it? We can add our definitions here in the settings meta fields page. We can edit the meta field value directly on the resource page. So if it's a product, we can go to the product page and edit it directly here. And then with this new theme editor, we can use dynamic data linking to link that meta field to any sort of field in our theme if we set it up as a theme or block setting. Super cool. I really like what Shopify have done here and it's gonna be a lot more fun and flexible to work with meta fields now given this change. One thing I wanna finish on before we wrap up because there are other content types that we didn't look at in today's video. I wanna to go to the official documentation. Hopefully if I just Google it, we will get the information. Meta fields types. I'm gonna click on this one. And here we go. Meta field support multiple data types. Click on that one. And you can see the reference here for the different types. Remember before I was talking about how when you add a file reference, that showed up really briefly in the admin. And that is something you would recognize if you're used to using the storefront API. There is a reference to different files and objects on your store that you would be more familiar with if you use the storefront API. But as you see here, if you read through the documentation, the value is always entered and stored as a string regardless of type. So we've got this single line, multi-line, page reference, integer, date, we can store these what seem like special types of data. At the end of the day, they're just stored as strings and that's how you would access them through the storefront API and other APIs. But to the end user, when I add in a file, for instance, like we did before, it feels like we're uploading a file directly to the field. But what we're doing is uploading a file directly to Shopify CDN and then referencing that image with this. But this all happens on the back end without you having to worry about it. Again, I like to go a bit deeper into my videos and share with you guys a more fundamental understanding. You don't necessarily need to know what happens in the back end, but this is important to understand if you wanna use the Shopify API and just something that's interesting to know for the more curious types out there. So there you have it, updating meta fields in Shopify is now an absolute breeze to what it used to be. But if you still have questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Make sure you hit like on this video if you've learned something new today and stay tuned to the channel for more videos. I'll see you on the next one.